What's up guys, my name is Luke and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be experimenting with the new Simba 4D cloth engine. So I'm sure you've seen a ton of tutorials on this type of stuff. I thought I would also do a tutorial on it because, I don't know, it's really cool, the cloth system, and it's really easy and fast to use, especially because they implemented the new GPU um, integration in it, which is really, really cool. So props to you, Maxon. Um, so yeah, we're gonna kind of create this kind of like ballooning effect kind of transitioning from one object to like taking that object and kind of expanding it uh, So yeah, let's get straight into it So let's start off over here by just changing our render settings to octane render Just so that when we bring in our objects from bridge that it comes in with those correct textures And I'm gonna use this concrete brick over here so it's up to you what you want to use but for my example of here i'm just going to use this brick it's the same brick that i used um, in the render that i'm sure you saw in the beginning of the video cool so looking at this if we had to go in beam just looking at the the lines over here this won't work for what we're trying to do but luckily the new summer 4d remesher is god tier it's it's so good it's it's literally a lifesaver i used to have to throw things into like houdini just to remesh it there to re-export back into cinema 4d but yeah so we have this over here um depending on the object that you're using you might want to increase the mesh density maybe to like 200 percent depending on how much detail you want to get um but i think for this example over here, I think about 100 to 150 should be fine, uh, depending on the, how much detail you want in it. But for this type of object, this should kind of be fine over here like this. Cool, let's go over here and say connect objects and delete. Let's name this brick. And awesome, let's get started on this video. So one thing that you'll notice is that there's like these kind of uh, glitches over here i think that's because of the remeshing of it because i think it kind of fucks up the uvs but it should be fine i mean what well, at least for this render it should be fine because you don't really notice it uh i think 3d bonfire did a tutorial similar and what he did to fix was just he kind of increased the the mesh density so yeah uh, you can also do that to increase that but for this it's kind of fine and also you don't really notice it or well, at least for this specific render yeah Cool, let's go over here and let's add in a vertex map over here. Click over here and then let's use use fields so that we're able to use the fields over here. Let's add a spherical field, bring that down. Um, and let's just position it somewhere. So I'm going to position it over here. Um, you might want to animate it to like come in because you'll see when we texture it just now that this part of here seems though it's already like uh, being affected by the vertex map that the texture will change so if you don't want that then you might want to animate this to like hit this let's go over here into the freeze option over here um, it usually does pop up with freeze but if it doesn't then just go over here and click on freeze let's go into the freeze and let's change the mode to grow and now you'll see when we press play it expands over there I don't know why it's running slowly it shouldn't be running slowly um, but yeah, okay, so let's set this to maybe a radius of three, three centimeters, and that looks good for now. Uh, with the speed, we'll change the speed now. Uh, the reason I'm not going to do that first is because we're going to add a delay, and with the delay, let's add a spring, and we set that to like 70. And now if we press play, you see it's also slower, but you see it kind of ripples through. I actually think the speed of that is fine, let's maybe make it just a tiny bit slower. So maybe like 70% of the string and that'll make it grow a little bit slower over here um, you don't need to add the delay uh, it depends on the look that you're going for so if you just do this it will just kind of become big as it's going uh, but adding this delay kind of adds these like ripples to the effect which I thought was pretty cool um, so yeah that looks cool to me let's go over here now and add in a cloth tag uh, before we do anything else, let's just go over here, press Command D, and let's go over here into our simulation settings, into the scene, and then turn off the gravity over here. 
So this is what I was talking about earlier with like the integration of the GPU. So you can use CPU, uh, depends on how, like what your system is. So if you have a pretty strong GPU, then I would recommend using the GPU. But if not, then, you know, CPU works just as well. It's just GPU is a little bit faster. It just does for some reason in the beginning when you press play, there is kind of like this hesitation, this like moment. <laughs> hesitation it's uh it takes a bit so in other words it might take like two seconds and then it'll start running it's a little bit annoying but it's way faster than the cpu cool so in the cloth over here if we had to just press play now you'll see it takes a few seconds and then when it actually does run nothing kind of happens to this thing it is cloth technically but there's no forces so there's no gravity either so it's just kind of staying the same way let's go over here into the cloth go into the mix animation with forces, set this to 100, and then drag in our vertex map. So what this is saying is that only use, uh, only turn it to cloth when, where the vertex map is being affected. Cool, and let's also go over here to the surface, and under the target length, we're gonna also drop this in over here. So I'm gonna set this to about 150, so the target length is kind of, if you had to just leave this to 100, it would stay the same. So like the density of the mesh will kind of stay the same. Kind of picture cloth and like how kind of the stretchiness, not, not stretchiness like this, kind of like the ex how much it expands. So actually, let me just show you here. So if we had to press play now, uh, I guess nothing's happening. But if we had to do this, you see a kind of, the cloth kind of, expands. I mean, you can kind of see it by just looking at the, the polygons, like how big they are and then how big they are here. They've kind of gone to 100, like uh, it's 0.5 times the size of here. So if we had set this to 200, it'll be the same thing. But now these are double the size of these, if that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, for this 150 should be perfect. And let's see, press play. Cool. So now it kind of turns to cloth. And that's cool so if this is the effect that you're looking for that's that but for my one i wanted it to kind of balloon outwards and expand so i turn on balloon over here and then i set it to three and now if you press play you should kind of get this like bulging and like you see the bubbly effect over here which is i don't know super weird and really cool or at least i think it's really cool and yeah so that is super cool cool so that is the main gist of this effect. Now let's get into the texturing and I can show you how I textured it. So let's just go back over here. Let's just set up a little scene just so that we can see what we're doing. Let's add a light over here. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna do some fancy lighting. You guys can do that. I'm just gonna set up like just some like three point lights over here just just so that it looks nice in the scene. Or you could just use an HDRI. I actually might just swap over to an HDRI, um, depending on how this looks, because uh, I don't really want to spend too much time on the lighting of the scene, because I feel like that's a lot of where like the, the artist's individual creativity can come in. Cool. And see. Cool, that's fine for now. Uh, let's just add path tracing over here. Uh, do we want to add a dark environment? I guess so. Cool. So now let's go over here to materials, create a mixed material. And we're going to create a specular material as well. So in the bottom material, material 2, we're going to select the whatever texture you have of your object. And then in material 1, we're going to select the specular material. We're then going to go into the mix over here. Let's select this and just go to auto arrange just to make it look nice and neat. Delete the float value. We don't need a float value. We're going to use a vertex map wherever that is. I can't find it. So let's just search it. Vertex map. Drop that in there. And now it's working. So now you'll see that uh, we have to add this to the actual thing now. Now you see what I mean in the beginning when I was saying you might want to animate it is because it's going to already be kind of like specular over there. But that's fine for this example that I'm going to be showing you guys. Cool, so now just by doing that, if we press play over here, you'll see as it expands, it changes to the specular material. Let me just let this run a little bit more. Okay, 
that should be fine. Cool, so I'm gonna show you guys how I did my uh, texturing. You might wanna do something different, but let me show you how I did mine. So let's just turn up the roughness over here. Maybe we to about one. Let's go over here into the medium, add a random walk. Let's go into the node editor. I'm not sure about you guys, but I really don't like the new, uh, I, I think it's just because it's in the new Cinema 4D, I could be wrong, um, but it's the same with Redshift and with Octane, that this thing just disappears. I mean, with Redshift, it's just not there unless you search for it, and it's cool and all if you like really good at the software and you know all the nodes and stuff, but like I wanted to learn Redshift and then I kind of stopped just because of the fact that I knew none of the nodes and this stuff wasn't here. I mean, I should still just learn it, but anyways, okay. Let's add a dirt node over here, and let's add a octane gradient. We're gonna throw the dirt node into the gradient over here, and then drop that into the albedo. Uh, with the gradients, let's select some colors, maybe like a blue, and I guess maybe a pink. We can always change that later. Ooh, that looks, looks tasty. But yeah, let's go over here to our random walk, and maybe set this to about 22. Um, and I kind of just mess with it until it suits the look that you're going for. And uh, the reason we're going to use a dirt node, so I mean we could just use a gradient over here, but that's kind of okay. I, I think the dirt node makes it really cool because then now you're able to get like details in between like all the little crevices over here. So if we had to increase the strength over here, maybe something like Something like that looks pretty cool. I just want to bring that down a little bit. Also, the top light is quite harsh. So I think like that works for now. Um, yeah, and I think that looks pretty cool. Maybe just bring down the, the roughness by a tad over here. Um, another trick that I saw, I think it was through um, Thanos. Uh, Motion Punk, yeah, great tutorials, he is brilliant. But anyways, um, over here on the material layer, adding this, I had never even known that there was a material layer, and I thought it was pretty cool, so you can go over here, add, and you can add a metallic layer. So what that does is it just adds this extra layer over here, and you can kind of add a specular or a diffuse or glossy, but over here we're gonna add a metallic layer and then let's add a fall off node just to the layer opacity so that it only shows on certain like just on like the the edges of it so if we if we raise this up more you'll see it kind of becomes like this metallic -y kind of look um, which I thought was really cool uh, and I had just a little bit of that in my render just to give it like an extra bit of shyness but depending on what type of look you're going for you know you can change that around I just want to increase the roughness by a bit and maybe just bring down the random walk, the density over here. And now we have a pretty cool effect. So now if we press play, it should go through the entirety of it. And what's really cool with adding the the delay over here. So if I had to just turn off this delay and redo this effect, it will just kind of expand in a you know uniform manner. So it, it really depends on the look that you're going for. I mean, this also looks super cool, but I really liked the kind of, the bulginess of the, it's a weird word, bulginess, but yeah, I feel like you get what I'm trying to say. The way it kind of expands and kind of has this like ripple effects like I don't know it just adds this like extra bit of detail which I thought was super cool uh, but yeah so that is the gist of the effect um, if you guys are interested I'm gonna have this up on my patreon and I'm gonna be breaking down a few other of these uh, let me show you so I created this the other day this is the main thing and I'm gonna be breaking down a few of these in the next coming weeks so yeah I think I'll be putting all of these on my patreon 
Um, and yeah, you just let me know. All of these are pretty much the exact same effect. Uh, well, I mean, except for this dust explosion thing, but I think that's there's already stuff like that on YouTube. I'll do one like that. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. Uh, nothing too complicated, but you're able to get a really cool effect and some pretty cool texturing ideas. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If you guys are interested, obviously, uh, in supporting the channel, a like and a subscribe goes a long way. Uh, if you also want these project files and to support the channel even more, uh, you can subscribe to my Patreon. But if you don't want to, that is completely chilled. And yeah, I will see you guys next week. Have a good one. Cheers.